Rose Ailing Ellis' closest pals reveal what has driven her strictly success. Rose Ailing Ellis has not just waltzed her way to being a household name, but she's making history as the first deaf contestant in the Strictly Come Dancing final. Today, Rose Ailing Ellis has not just waltzed her way to being a household name, but she's making history as the first deaf contestant in the Strictly Come Dancing final. It's a story that's been hailed as everything from remarkable and inspirational to awe-inspiring. But for those that have known Feisty Rose the longest, there was never a single doubt she was heading for the big time. Indeed their little firework has never let anything stand in her way, and certainly not being part of the deaf community, a badge she has always worn with pride. On Saturday, Rose, 27, and her partner Giovanni Pernis, 31, will face AJ Odudu and Kai Widrington and John Waite in Johannes Redebe in the final showdown. And now, in a two-part series, friends, mentors and teachers reveal just how she got there, from her childhood by the seaside with single mum Donna to her big break on EastEnders. One person who's witnessed it all is family friend Margaret McLaughlin. The 83-year-old has lived next door to the ailing since Rose was a baby. She remembers Rose when she was just a smiley young schoolgirl who'd come calling for her granddaughter, eager to go out and play. Now that same smile beams at her from the magazine cover Margaret's put in pride of place in the front room of her terrace house, in Hyde, Kent. I bought this copy especially and will make sure I keep it, she says. I've known her since she moved in with her mum next door when she was a baby. I remember her mum coming over to me all excited, saying she was glad that there was another little girl around here for her to play with. I had to tell her that it was only my granddaughter and that she was only visiting. They ended up as friends though and still are. Margaret used to wave each morning as Rose caught a taxi to school, always amazed by how polite she was. She has grown up to be a very confident young lady. And her mum is lovely, says Margaret. Rose is an adventurous young girl and she has never let being deaf hold her back at all. I used to watch her on Casualty. She didn't have a big part but it was lovely to see her on the TV. Now I watch Strictly every week just to see Rose on it. I'll be rooting for her to win. Rose started at Hythe Sheraton Primary, which boasted a specialist deaf unit. By the time Rose started secondary at the John Wallace Church of England Academy, she was already excelling academically and socially. In fact, she was so popular, she was voted deputy head girl. It was while congratulating Rose on her emotional couple's choice dance symphony, an ode to deafness, partly danced in silence, that the school gave away their nickname for her, our little firework. Head teacher Damien McBeath tells us, Rose has won the hearts of the nation and is an inspiration to everyone, especially our pupils. We hope to see Rose dancing in the final. In a joint statement, Rose's teachers add, Rose was always a hard-working pupil who gave her absolute best in everything. Her work ethic was incredible and she was enthusiastic about her learning. Rose always had a smile on her face and was very popular with other pupils. She was always cheerful and did not seem to let anything get her down. She was determined to do her best. She was a fun-loving, positive individual with a strong determination to succeed. A fondly remembered pupil. It's big praise. Popular, smart, kind, outgoing, determined and positive. Not one adjective to suggest she ever let her lack of hearing affect her. And why should she? Rose did well academically, getting 4A, 6Bs and 2Cs in her GCSEs. Yet when she was 15, her mum Donna signed her up for a filmmaking workshop in London with the National Deaf Children's Society, and it was exactly the confidence boost she needed. In a 2018 interview for a deaf community site, Rose explained, My amazing mum encouraged me to go. I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. At the time I was quite shy at school so I had never got involved with any performing. The thought of getting up on stage in front of the whole school made me feel physically sick. However, in the privacy of my own home, I was always the one who would put on a show and entertain the family. I think through the performance I found a way to communicate and express my feelings visually. And the filming weekend was where I found a belief in myself. It was also where she met deaf film director Ted Evans who, two years later, cast her in his critically acclaimed short film The End, about a backlash to a cure for deafness. After that, she fell in love with acting but saw it as a hobby because of a lack of deaf actors on TV.